of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I wish, alhamdulillah, if you like that, that you had it enjoyed the lecture yesterday about the, the rest of the seven that will be taken under the shade of the throne of Allah on the day of judgment, on the day that there is will not be shade except the shade of Allah and his throne. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the beneficial knowledge, Allahumma ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And as you know that every Wednesday we will talk about the main theme of one of the surahs of Quran. And alhamdulillah, we had reached to chapter number 16. And we are going to talk today about Surah Al-Nahl. And Surah Al-Nahl, what's the meaning of Al-Nahl? The honeybees. Okay, the honeybees. So there is, uh, as, as you know, some of the, the, the surahs of Quran, the chapters of the Quran named after some of the prophets, some of the, the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not only, not only the insects or the honeybees, the honey but also we have the surah, surah al-Naml, the ants, the chapter of the ants, and we have surah al-Baqarah, the cow, as you know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes is giving us the names of the surahs that it is suitable for a certain topic. And as you know, that we divide the surahs in of the Quran according to the time of revelation into two types, Mecca and Madani. So this surah is Mecca or Madani? Mecca surah, Allahu Akbar. So it is Mecca surah, means it was revealed before the time of the hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So all the surah is Mecca and which has 128 verses. We have 128 verses, except two verses, verse number 126 and verse number 128. Those two verses were revealed in al Madina, were revealed in al Madina from, from 126 to 128. Those verses or those three verses were revealed in al Madina and it has a story, inshallah, if we had time, we can tell you the story why those revealed those verses only were revealed in al Madina and what is the significance of that. But <clears throat> let me go to the, the surah itself. The chapter is Surah to Nahl, it's the chapter of the honeybees. And the why it is called the chapter of the honeybees and why Allah revealed this surah at that time, at that particular time, to the heart of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As you know, that surah was revealed right after Surah Al-Kahf. As you know, Surah Al-Kahf, the surah that we recite every Jumu'ah. So this surah was revealed right after Surah Al-Kahf. And it was revealed because of, you know, lots of the, the disbelievers during the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they wanted I would not say to challenge the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they wanted just to, to mock him, to make fun of him. Some of his tribe, some of his clan started to make fun of him. Uh, oh, Muhammad, are you saying that are we going to be punished and your God is going to send a punishment for us? We are waiting for that punishment. We are waiting for your God to send us the punishment. And one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that surah after they came to his house and they started to call him, Oh Muhammad, where is the punishment of your Lord? We need the punishment. Let him send the punishment right now. We are waiting. And they started to stare at the skies. You know, at that time, Allah had revealed the first very verse of the surah. What's the first very first verse? Allah is saying, Ata Amrullah. The command of Allah had came. Fala tastajilu. Do not be in rush. There is a day that you are going to be punished. Don't worry. It's already had been written that you are going to be punished. And he said, Ata. Ata, the word Ata means came. He expressed that in the past. And the proper, you know, pattern or figure that you wanted to have, that he will say, it will come because it will happen. That will be in the future. But yet Allah is still talking about in the past simple tense means 
it certainly, it is for sure will happen. No doubt about this. You know, when you, when you form something in the past, like I will tell you, brother, could you prepare, prepare a, a cup of tea for me? You would say, yes, sir, it's done. What does it mean? It's, it didn't happen yet, but done means consider it done. You know, it for sure that happened, done. You are talking about certain business deal? Done, brother, don't, don't worry, it's done. It's the same happens in the Quran. Allah says, you are calling for the punishment, making fun of Muhammad, it's done, done deal. Okay, don't worry about it. I will give it to you. But don't be in rush. It will, it will happen when the day of judgment will, will, will come. So the, the, the order it's itself or the decree of Allah had done, but the execution will happen on the day of judgment. And as a matter of fact, as you know, the, the, the qualities of the surahs of the chapters were revealed before the hijrah, before the migration of the Prophet Muhammad. It always was what, what, what all the surahs were addressing the death believers and the believers and those who will come after. Allah used to talk with them about his greatness and he is the almighty, the creator. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked at the beginning of this surah. If you just read the, the first page, it is talking about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's talking about his power, his absolute you know, control on his creation. And Allah is giving us some examples of his creation. Allah is talking about wal khayla, wal bighala, wal hamira, litarkabuha wa zina. I have created to you horses, mules, and donkeys, so you can use them to travel. You can ride over them, and you can get that long distance done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking also about creating the mountains, creating the jungles, creating all the, the species that we know and the species that we do not know. Okay? So imagine this, like... All the what, what this what the scientists said that amongst the the famous species that the, the species that we know we know only ten percent of the creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And He had created things that you have have never knew about. You have never knew about the creation of Allah, all the creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And not only this, we are always have a certain target in each and every surah to know what's the main theme of that surah. So this surah is talking basically about a certain theme, which is the wisdom. If I can summarize it in one word, the 128 verses has a main theme. That's the central message in this surah. It is talking about the wisdom, the wisdom in creation, the wisdom in the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wisdom in dealing with one another, how to have wisdom and to convey the message of Allah with wisdom. That's the main message of the surah. As I told you, if you are searching in the Quran using the topics, the titles, uh, oh, please, I want it. A chapter is talking about the creation of Allah. I want a chapter is talking about the story of the prophet Abraham. I want a chapter is talking about the previous nation. I want a chapter is talking about the Islamic Sharia, the Islamic laws. I want a chapter is talking about wisdom. Here is the surah that you wanted to read, chapter number 16. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing that wisdom in a very beautiful and amazing way. Wallahi, in such a way that it arouses and attracts our attention. When it comes to the, 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 the word how Allah, the, the way that Allah, how he put the words together and he gave us examples in the creation. Like, let, let me give you example. From, it's taken from the surah itself. Allah is talking about وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً Allah had, had sent down 
the water, the rain from the sky. And listen about that example very, very well because we wanted to learn something new today. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I had sent down the water from the sky and without the water, there is no life on earth. And Allah said, some of these crops, some of these harvests, some of these outcomes, the grains, the fruits, grapes, even Allah mentioned fruits, grapes. And I, in this surah, Allah mentioned some types of fruits, some types of grapes, or, or sometimes of the things that we eat. Allah said, I have given all of that to you. But there are some fruits, some, you know, food, it will come out without your efforts. Like if we are talking about Amazon jungle, you know, so in that jungle, you have the rain come. Do you have apple in the jungle? Do you have apple? Do you have fruits? Yes. So some of, some of these fruits, it needs your effort as a human being. So the agriculture to cultivate it, okay? And subhanAllah, without our agriculture, the man couldn't have the civilization. That's why Allah guided us to, to plant. He guided us to have the agriculture. That's by his guidance, subhanahu wa ta'ala, so can, we can produce food and fruits. And the fruits that it goes, it grow by itself, it grows by itself, it would not be sufficient to the human being to consume. That's why Allah taught us how to do the agriculture. But yet, yet, some of those fruits, some of those, those types of grapes and, and, and the, the things that we eat, it grows by itself. It does not want you as a human being to interfere. Take that as an example and listen to, the, to, to this example and please compare it and link it to one another. Allah said, listen to this expression, الكتاب, and we have sent down the revelation as a guidance to your hearts. So as Allah has sent down the rain, which is the source of the life for the species, the species and the human beings and all the living beings, Allah has sent down also the revelation as the source of the life for what? For the hearts, the spiritual, the spiritual oxygen, as we called before. So as the water is the oxygen or the source for the life for earth and for the living beings also, for the believers, he sent down and used, look at these two words, anzalna and anzalna we had sent down. As he sent down the rain, he sent also the revelation. And listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as you know in Surah Al-Baqarah, your heart became hard. You had hard hearted. Allah said, and that is why I have, I have sent you the Quran so it will revive. It will, you know, resurrect these hearts again. It will bring life to your hearts again. And that is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that example in Surah al nahl So when you read the Quran, you will get to the point that you will get the wisdom as he sent the water to bring the life back to the earth he sent the revelation, the Quran, to bring life back to the hearts. But listen, sometimes we said, we have crops, harvests, fruits, it, go, it grows by itself. And we have, some of them needs our, our work, our efforts, okay? But listen, the guidance from Allah, 
Sometimes it needs us to deliver the message, to convey the message, so we can bring we can bring more people to the guidance. Or sometimes you see people, the guidance goes from Allah to them directly without our intervention, without our work, without our efforts. So a man comes to Islam because of what? Because, you know, he had listened by himself. He had searched by himself. No one delivered the message to him. So Allah is telling you, as I am producing the, the harvests, the crops, the fruits from the water, without your work, I can guide people without you convey the message to them. Listen to this. So it is something, and sometimes, do you think Allah is sending the risk to you? Risk. Risk means the provision, the sustenance. Do you think that Allah is sending the risk to you because of your work, or he is going to send it to you even without work? Do you have the evidence for that? What's this? Yes, <laughs> he is our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because he created us, he will feed us. And I told you before about this story about, uh, I think Imam Malik had the, the argument with somebody, you know, about, about that concept. Do I need to work to get the risk or Allah is going to give it to me without work? So he had that concept that I need to work, I need to do something. So he, while he was arguing with that scholar, he told him, okay, you have your, your opinion, I have your opinion, we respect each other. But that Imam, Imam Malik, went after the discussion, then he had a person, he told him, can you please help me so I can, if, if you have help me, I can give you that plate of date. I can give you that plate of date as a, as a, a, a compensation for your work. So he went, he helped him, then he gave him the plate of dates. And you know what? He was so happy. I work and I got risen. So he went that to that scholar immediately to, to tell him, I win. I have the evidence. I worked and I got the plate of dates. And you know what? The scholar stretched his hand and he took one of the dates and he ate it and he said, and my Rabb give me risk without working, you know? So he, he said he used his evidence against them actually. So that's the case. Allah, and, and that is what the, the scholar said, yarzuku bi asbabin wa bi ghayril asbab. He gives risk with reasons and without reasons. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that will take me to the other point. Why Allah had named this surah, this chapter, Surah Al-Nahl, the honeybees. When, what's the relationship of the honeybees with the main theme, which is the wisdom? That's a very important question. Imam, you told us about the wisdom is the main theme. And what is how it is related, how it is connected to the honeybees. The honeybees, Allah had mentioned them in the Quran. And it has the, the two verses, verse number 68 and 69. And please, I urge you, after you finish the lecture, go to the Quran, the copy of Quran, bring chapter 16, verse number 68 and 69, read it by yourself and discover the miracles the scientific miracles that Allah had mentioned in the Quran. How the verses started. Allah said, it's amazing. Wallahi, my words cannot express what I have in my heart when, when I read these two verses. Even with my ability in English, yes, my, the English is not my mother tongue, but yet even if I'm talking in Arabic, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go give you the full meaning. 
even if you understand my Arabic language, still, still we have a lot of miracles, a lot of things we wanted to, to discover. Allah said, وَأَوْحَى رَبُّكَ إِلَى And I'm talking word by word so you can get that meaning. Your Lord had inspired the honeybees. And the word awha comes from wahi. And normally we say wahi means a revelation. We translate, and actually in some websites I saw, I found them that they translated, translated this word wa that your Lord has revealed, which is wrong, which is not accurate. Wa here means he had inspired, he had taught, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa As we know, ila ummi Musa. Allah had inspired the mother of Moses. Allah didn't say, didn't send the, the angel Jibreel, and he didn't reveal Quran or, or sacred words. But Allah had inspired, had taught the honeybees. For what? Allah inspired them, had taught them. That is the speech of Allah to the honeybees. That's the order. That's the inspiration. Allah is telling the honeybees to take as a dwellers, as the, the mountains, the trees, and our houses to take them to build their own houses, their own hives, to, to, to build their own houses in the mountains, on the trees and in our buildings. And from what they own as inhabitants. So Allah is telling the honeybees, here's the places that you are going to live in, the mountains and on the trees and in their buildings. So in the corner of the masjid, in the corner of your house, of your garage, you will find the hives of the honeybees. Subhanallah. And Allah is telling something. I wanted you to concentrate. Allah is addressing whom? Which kind? The males or the females? No. Allah, and that's the first scientific miracle in the Quran. Please listen. If you are talking with a non-Muslim about, you know, he's arguing about Muhammad has wrote that Quran and that's not the word of God and all this stuff, just give him these two verses tell him that was revealed 14 centuries ago. And how could Muhammad to know these old secrets about the honeybees communities and the honeybees kingdom? So what the Quran says, Allah had inspired the honeybees. And Allah is talking about is talking to the females one. Allah is talking about the females only. Allah is referring to them. Then Allah said, Thumma kuli min kulli thamarat. Then eat from all the fruits and flowers to get what? The nectar. The nectar. Fasluki subula rabbiki dhulula. Then follow the ways, the roads that Allah had made easy for you. Allah is talking about the honeybees, the females want when they leave their haves and they move to the flowers to get the nectar. And you know what? Allah did not address the males. Recently, 
let's say 100 years ago, let's say 200 years ago, let's say 300 years ago, recently we had discovered that only the females are producing honey. The males never ever, they couldn't produce honey. Their, their work is to do what? Is to stay at their houses, devils, so they can guard, protect the queen and the babies and the little eggs. So Allah here knows that the one will fly to get the, the nectar from the flowers, from the fruits, is are the females. So the males are not working. That's one of the scientific miracles. The, the first one, I will tell you three scientific miracles. There is no doubt in them. Just in two verses, Allah mentioned three scientific miracles miracles so that's number one Allah had inspired then he addressed thumma kuli Allah you know if Allah is talking to males he will say kul kul not kuli Allah will say ittakhid or ittakhidu but Allah said ittakhidhi Allah is talking to the females wa awha rabbuka ila nah I'm reciting the first verse. Then we will move to the second. Then eat. From all the fruits and the flowers, take the nectar. The same one. Then fly following that path that Allah had made easy for you. And you, you know what? Did you, did you hear about the, the, the dance of the bees? Scientific fact, it's called dance of the bees. How the bees direct each other. If they, if they found like flowers, good ones, how they direct the rest of the bees in the, hi, in the hives, how they direct them. They go back after they get the nectar, if it is smells well, if it is too much, if it is good time, they will go in front of the, the hay, in front of the house, and they start to wiggle. That is scientifically called the dance of the bees. And they will wiggle certain steps. They will move that, you know, shake that part, the back part, and they will move in circles. And each and every circle, it will tell them how many miles they need to travel. They need to fly. Like, I need you to read about this. I have the full research about this. It it's called the dance of the bees. Search on, on Google about the way of wiggling. And this is what Allah said. Allah said, Fasluki. Allah said, didn't say, Tiri. That's the second scientific fact. Allah did not say fly. He said, Fasluki. Fasluki, that means it's a zigzag way. And when it comes, it starts to wiggle, to dance. So Allah mentioned the dance of the bees 14 centuries ago to direct the rest for the, the, the location of the flowers and the roses. So that is the first GPS, you know? It gives them that location. Listen to this, that Allahu Akbar. That's the scientific miracle. Allah said, after he told them about the path, about the directions, Allah said, يَخْرُجُ And listen to this. يَخْرُجُ مِن بُطُونِهَا شراب. Out of its bellies, out of its bellies, there are, there is a drink comes out, has different colors, and it has cure for people from the diseases. 
I would not talk about the cure because that's something obvious right now, how they extracted the medicine from the, the honey and they put it in, in, in the manufacturing of the medicine. And that's, that's a clear proof like the sun itself. But let me go two words before that. Allah said, يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بُطُونِهَا It will come out of its bellies. Allah is mentioning that each and every bee, that each and every bee, the individual, one bee, it has multiple bellies, not one. And that is what the science had proved. How come that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the messenger of Allah could know 14 centuries ago that the one bee has multiple bell bellies and it has one of those bellies. It has a name, it is called the chamber of the honey. That's why he said, it will come out from its bellies. Butuniha. If Allah wanted to say one, one belly, he could say batniha. Batniha. But he said butuniha. One bee has multiple bellies. How could Muhammad know this? Sallallahu alayhi wa before the microscope, before the, even the, sign, the scientists discovered this just recently. And when we say recently, we could say 200, 300 years ago, even though that's just recently. If you compare that with 14 centuries ago, how could for a man sitting in the desert to know that by himself? يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بُطُونِهَا شَرَابٍ Allah said sharab, it's a drink, it's a drink. It is something you can drink. It has different colors. And you can see by yourself right now. It has different colors. Then he said, Allahu Akbar. It has cure for people. We can talk about the miracles and we can link that with the hadith. We have hundreds of transmissions. We have hundreds of, you know, the narrations of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad talking about the shifa, the cure in the honey. You know that the story of the man that who had mentioned Someone, mashallah, brother Fazl, very quickly he searched for the dance of the bees and he put the link for the brothers and sisters on Zoom so they can search and they can find by themselves. Allahu Akbar. Jazakallah khairan, brother. Yes, that's the, that's the link that I'm talking about. Mashallah. So now I'm, I'm, I just wanted to share with you, I was talking about, subhanallah, that distracted me a little bit. Yes. <laughs> so it went, it went the, I lost I lost my train of thinking. <laughs> no, no, yes, I'm I'm talking about the story happened. Barakallahu fi. You you give me the first of the threat, you know. So Allah the, the story happened with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi it's a funny story for a man who came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, my my brother is complaining from a pain in his stomach. Stomach pain. So what should I give him? He said, give him honey. So he went the second day. He said, he's still complaining, Ya Rasulullah. Should I give him honey? He said, yes, give him honey. The third day, he said, he's still in pain. Should I give him honey? And he said, yes, give him. He said, Ya Rasulullah, but that does not work. He said, Sadaqallah wa kathabat batnu akhik. Means Allah is telling the truth. And you, the stomach of your brother is lying. Means what? <laughs> Means what? You are giving him not with the full trust in the words of Allah. You have kind of doubt. You are testing Allah. <laughs> Maybe it's a fake honey. 
Oh, okay. Just I, I wanted I wanted you to, to think about that. Because sometimes we make the dua to Allah and we are, I would not say in a state of doubt, but actually what we are testing Allah if he is going to answer us or not. That's why one of the instructions of Rasulullah, when you make dua, make dua while you are confident in the answer. While you are trusting Allah that he's going to answer you. That's the case. Make a dua to Allah while you are trusting him that he's answering you. But if you are testing Allah, that's the, you, we cannot test Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah knows your intention, that he, you are doing this, that you are testing him and he will never ever answer your dua. Unless you have the firm belief in him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what's the relationship of the honeybees with the wisdom? Do you have the answer? They have wisdom in each and everything in their life. Allah wanted us to, to, to learn as human beings, to learn the wisdom from the honeybees. How much they take from, from the nectar in the flowers, how they are going to spread the, the seeds to get more, so they are not only consuming what's in the environment, but they are helping in producing more to keep the balance in the environment. All their life about one word called the wisdom and the balance. Balance in each and everything. The females working to produce honey and the males are guarding, are protecting and guarding the, the, the babies and protecting the houses. So they have balance. And not only this, they have balance in producing the honey. They cannot produce more of the capacity of their houses. Otherwise it will collapse. It will collapse. They can measure this. They can know each chamber, each hole. What about the capacity of each hole? And look at the amazing, <laughs> the amazing architecture, the amazing structure, the amazing construction of building their houses. That's breathtaking. That mind blowing. Who taught them to do this? And who taught them to do that, that form, that way of building that keeps and investing each and every centimeter of the space. They do not waste any space. It's all about wisdom. And even when you read about the king, the, the, the queen, how it rules, how it governs the kingdom, her own kingdom, that's amazing. If someone did something wrong, if he stole something, if stranger came to, the, to their kingdom, they wanted to invade their kingdom, they have their certain laws in such a way, wallahi, it's enough for an atheist, for an atheist, to read only about the kingdom of the bees, to realize that cannot be coincidence, that, 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 that cannot be just by accident, ju ju that cannot be only by, you know, the, 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 the accident made, made it, the nature made it, the nature created that by itself. It has a creation, creator behind it. And that is enough. To understand. Yes, please. When I was reading about the numerical Yes. Yes. Chromosomes. Yes, that is also included because it is. It is. Yes, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, the number of the verse, which is talking about the bees, 69, 68. The bees had 68 chromosomes in it. And not only this, even the words. Allah had inspired the honeybees. If you counted the letters for those words, it will give you how many chromosomes that the bees has. Lots of miracles. I just shared three, but we have hundreds of miracles that you can discover from these two verses. Subhanallah, that cannot be anything except the words of our Lord. How could Rasulullah know this? Please, I need you to share as much as you can. Share these two verses. And I'm trying to share it with you after the lecture with the right and the proper translation. Because, for example, I was listening to some of the, the non-Muslims who was criticizing this verse and says that the Quran is telling us that the, that the bees only consume and they take the nectar from only the fruits, not the flowers. Because somebody translated the word athamarat Athamarat as fruits, which is not accurate. If Allah wanted just to say fruits, he would say fawake, fawake. And that's, that's the word that Allah had used in the Quran, in Surah Al-Waqi'ah. Allah could say fawake, fruits, only fruits. But if he said thamarat, the word thamara, that's the outcome. That's the, what, what the plant produces. What the plants produce. That is called thamara. Whether it was a fruit or it wasn't a fruit. It is called thamara. The, the watermelon, the watermelon, we call it thamara. If we got benefit, if we got benefit from this lecture, that benefit, it is called Thamara, Thamara. So the, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive those people who, who, who give the bad translation for the Quran because they created disasters, disasters. So I will share inshallah with you the proper translation. So please spread the message, just two words and you don't know the guidance comes from where it's only from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wish if we could have time so I can conclude the last two, three verses was revealed in Al Medina and the white specifically revealed in Al Medina, but I don't think that we have too much time now. Maybe, maybe we'll keep that for the next week, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the knowledge that it will elevate our ranks in dunya and the hereafter, and it will increase our iman and keep our iman firm, firm in our hearts. Allahumma ameen. Zakum Allahu khaira. Barak Allahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min ayatin wa al-dhikr al-hakim. Hatha wa salli Allahumma wa sallim. Wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Zakum Allahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.